Hey y'all, so we're back for another episode of working in our jelly um, decks. It's important that we keep moving along on this as promised. We're just going to make sure we move through this weekly and the cards are piling up. So um, it does make a difference to just kind of stick with it. So, yep. Um, I'm glad you guys liked the one from last week. Um, got a lot of good comments on that and people are going out and finding their uh, their Rolodexes and a few of you said I need another project like I need a hole in the head but I'm on board so <laughs> I'm the same way. Today what we're going to do is I'm going to show you another technique for um, printing on the plates using some acrylics and we're going to use some Sumi drawing ink. Those of you who follow me may remember this technique, but I know it's a lot of new followers and people who haven't seen my techniques before. I'm going to show you what I do with that and get some really cool results. Um, so we're going to get started and also definitely stick around for the end of this video because I'm going to show you a really super neat technique that I would almost bet that 99% of you have never seen before with this jelly plate and it will revolutionize your printing experience. So I'm going to do that at the very end and I have to do it at the end because my plate is way too clean right now. I cleaned it because of a technique I'm going to show you guys next Saturday so tune in for that. It's going to be another one of those cool techniques that takes the jelly plate to a whole nother level. So I have things, I have things. Alrighty, so let's get going. We're going to get ahead, go ahead and start with putting some things on the plate. Um, I want to use, I'm going to just use some different stuff to stamp with and do things with so that, um, I want to create some different patterns from last time because I want our patterns to just to keep on sort of doing different things. So I'm just going to pull out some random, oh, this is kind of cool. These, this with different circles on it. So let's just pull this one out and work with that one. And then we're going to work with this, which is just a piece of packing material with one side pulled off and the other side I have um, glue gun on it. So let's play with that. And we have our cards here. So we're going to get started. Let me, I, I, I'm in a red sort of mood and I don't know what these reds are going to look like. So these are some of the Arteza. We'll work with some of these and I'm going to work with um, some of my other paints that I love. Work with some of these uh, color shifts. I love those. And uh, we have it in a teal. So let's see. I'm curious just to find sort of a red that speaks to me. So just go ahead and make um, some some marks in this. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead with some of these cards that I had started print done some off printing on the last the last one. Go ahead and get these on here. My plate is super clean, so I'll be able to make a lot of use of a lot of it. <laughs> so, I'm just going to use a piece of this um, kind of like deli paper. I can use it just to get extra marks on it, so I might as well. Let's just see how it works. How was you guys weeks a week? I hope you guys had a pleasant one. Move into the into the fall. Okay, you see the pattern? It kind of creates sort of like this sort of snakeskin pattern. But let's, you know, we're just doing this and building up. My plate's a lot a little dry too, so you know how it is getting started.
that sort of neat how that blue was underneath there so you can already see some layering going on let's just we're going to work quickly and we're just going to get stuff filled up so that was which one was that was that the carmen red or crimson i think that was crimson so let's try carmen or was that carmen it might have been carmen i forgot which one it was yeah it was carmen so let's try the crimson see what that color is like It looks close, unless I had used Carmen before. You're probably, probably telling me right now, that's the one you already used. <laughs> oh, boy. That's about that. We're just going to do this, get some. <coughs> I'm going to get some more cards out. And what I do is I just try to print so many at a time and even just to kind of get things started and then you know we'll print as much as we'll do in the next 20 minutes and then you know stop and come back to it I'll just take one of these put it there okay If, if it comes out the same, I'm going to know it's the same one. It's all good. So from here, we're going to go into some of the color shift colors right now. Oh, yeah. So I must have used the other one because this one is definitely deeper. So I definitely like, which one do I need to remember? I definitely like this crimson red. That was the color I was going for. That's good. Yeah, you can definitely see how different it's a nice rich color I like that okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go for the teal and the color shift and I'm gonna put a little bit of orange with it because it makes a really neat um, it makes a really neat kind of olive color, which I like. It's real earthy. Okay. So I'm just going to go, let me see. Let's just do some similar pattern real quick just to kind of break it up. We'll put some of this on the back, some on the front. Remember, we're just building up layers right now. I won't be doing all these cards today, but, you know, we're just starting somewhere. Okay. Show you a few techniques. The time so I can get it all in. I'm going to show you how to do wow see see with that red underneath there how that you get a little bit of the blue when you mix them on the plate I mixed them up a bit so I got the orange and the blue still there but you get a little bit of the um oh that's pretty look at that wow it starts getting rich I love these color shift paints Wow, that looks good. And now what's going to happen is some of the red that's down on the plate is going to start pulling up with these other colors, which is good. See that, that red that was laying down there will start pulling up on some of these layers. Wow, I love it. So rich. Mm. Perfect. That's what I was hoping for. So let's do something similar to that. We're going to use... Um, I'm going to go with this blue here. It's the blue flash. This one right here is teal, aqua flash, and this one is teal. So we're going to put this down, and we're going to put this over this other one, along with, I want to put something else 
in there. Maybe I'll just use a little bit of this metallic gold, this brush. Okay, so this one is what's, this is brush gold in the brush metals. Okay, so let's, let's just get that, just so we kind of get a mixture of the paints on the plate. Okay, just keep on using this because all I'm doing is really breaking up the surface and we're just doing pattern overlays. I'm just kind of doing every other side. <clears throat> Move these out the way for right now. Love these um, color shifts. If you guys haven't used them, it's a must. You get them at... Um, you can get them at uh, Michael's or Joann's, any of those places will have these color shifts. Oh, even Walmart. You go in Walmart, Walmart's carrying them now too. They had been carrying them for, um, but they didn't have a full range, but now they seem to brought in a full range. So that's a good place. And they're on, these are inexpensive. They're only like um, two, three dollars, two something, two, it's like two, it's like $3.99 or $2.99, something like that, depending on where you find them. Wow. Look how deep that got with the gold in it. We're building up layers quickly. With these paints, yes. Oh, love it. Love it. It's really nice. We'll come back and put some more on that one. Wow, look at that one. Gorgeous. I'll try to get them to focus so you guys can appreciate it. Look at that. Look at the gold and just got some really nice layers there. So let's put, um, let me get some of these that are partial. We got a lot real quick. Okay, so let me get. Um, I want to do one more layer and then we're going to go and I'm going to show you how to do. I just don't like this. I'm going to get some orange. I don't want to take the time to undo the plastic on here, so that's why I just took the cap off. See, because it's new, so I haven't. Hmm. Okay, let's just do the orange. Okay, let's go back over some of these. So, you'll see why I'm not focusing on a lot of pattern right now. When I come back to these, it's going to make sense to you. These are yummy. Those right there. Okay, so these right here, I'm supposed to put these on first. Let me put these up here so I can remember to come back to those. Now, let's see. I'll just do these like this just to get a little something on them. All right. Okay. So I'll show you what we're going to do next. This is this is going to kind of be our overall pattern. Um, it's going to determine our overall pattern. I didn't even go to that circle yet, did I? Okay. Wow. See how deep and rich that orange is? 
Oh, look at that. It really has that old wall mm. look to it. Perfect. Wow, look at that. That red as a base is really good. Okay, so just look at that. Even so that just that plain color in this print came, I don't know, some some kind of way where the way I did the brayer or something actually just made that that dark space there, which is really cool. Yummy. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the next part of this. Let's get some of that on there now. Oh, I like how it's picking that red up. We're getting to our old wall look really very quickly here today. That looks good. Looks good too. Okay, so now I'm going to go to really liking whatever happened here. I liked how that created that look you see it's really giving it just a lot of texture very quickly but I find that when you mix your paints like I started off with a a opaque paint using the Arteza so that was thicker paint and then when you come back with these thinner sort of glazing paints it's amazing the kind of material that you'll start picking up off the plate okay so now what we're going to do so we're going to go to the next part of this so what I do is I'll take like a gold, let's use the Martha Stewart in the um, pale bronze. So this I'm going to put on the plate like a glaze. So I don't put a whole lot and it's really, I'm just going to glaze it up like this, kind of create this glaze. And I'm really rolling a few times because I'm making it thin. Then I'm going to take some of my Sumi ink. This is a very black ink. So this is, um, I have links for this um, on my video, uh, below, below the video here. So I'm just going to use like a watercolor brush. This is a, a number three. And um, I'm just going to start drawing and scripting. Don't mind too the scripting, you know I I'm fond of doing. Sometimes I go backwards, forwards. It, it just forces me to do different lines. And then what we're going to do is we're going to now take our, our cards and I think I'll do it like this. We're just going to put them down right over while it's wet and I'll get, it'll start making sort of like a, um, it, in some ways, it'll pick up the texture. It'll sort of be ink blotty, which I like. It's one of the, the ways I like to do it. And at the same time, I'll well grab this right there, right there. Okay. So now what we're going to do is press these down, give it some pressure, because I definitely, you'll see, it's going to give like a sort of a Rochart sort of ink blot look, but it's also going to be controlled. So you're going to still see the language. It's one of, the, I love doing this technique. Okay. See? Oh, look at that. Tell me that's not gorgeous. Let's get it to focus. So it's still wet, but look at it. Ugh. Oh. So when it dries down, I'll show them to you again, but look at that. Isn't that just like a miracle? <laughs> oh, I love it. This is one of my fave techniques. Just looks like just old 
just old world. Like it's it's hard with the metallics because the light, my, my soft box wants to pick it up. Oh, look at that. See that? Oh, just yummy. Mm. So, we'll do some more of these with that. They're just the best. And just on that, um, do some more there. These were the ones I just put at the bottom. Love it. Ugh, look at that. Ugh. So we're going to do more of that series. So this black that it's on there, I'm just going to kind of roll it onto the plate. It's just going to give some background texture. And we're going to come with that again. But I think I'm going to also show it to you in the metallic. The deco art, these are it's champagne gold. These are all inexpensive paints you can get at um check this up. You can get these at Michaels, Joann's, Hobby Lobby, um, Walmart. So we're, we're we're down to our you know a couple dollar paints here. But using this technique, they are just incredible. Let's just go ahead. Here again, we're going to do, this is what I call my glazing technique. So we don't have a lot of paint on the plate, not at all. We're just glazing. We're putting a layer down because it allows, if you put the, um, the paint right on the plate, it'll bubble up. So we won't have any, it, it won't create lines or marks. So we have to put a little bit of something down here so that it will have something to grab onto, the sumi. Because the sumi paint, the sumi ink is, you know, water-based. It's carbon um, in water, in a water, you know, mixture. So, you know, putting this little layer of um, of acrylic down really allows for there to be something for it to grab onto. Okay, a little bit more on this side here, so we have something going off the edge. Might as well get all we can. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use some of these where I don't have a lot of information on them. Put that down there. That's there. Oh, we're getting a lot of cards done here. That there. And remember, these are just the foundation of what we're doing with our jelly decks anyway. So this is perfect. Let's do like this. So this is perfect to be able to just get this amount of um, cards knocked out. And alrighty. And then of course, you know, we'll be collaging on these and putting our text. I can't wait till we get to that part of it. But we'll actually start putting our storyline in this. So when we share them with people, they can actually read the storyline. Mine is what I call sacred journaling. So it's it's really a part of my mythos. Look at that. That just looks good. That's gorgeous. And you can see with that, that's the color of the champagne gold. Um, so it's a way to sort of tell a story, a storyline. Um, these are good. These are good. Okay. That's even good, too. I'm just going to go back over some of that ink right here that is still wet. Just pick some of that up. See that? Just pick some of this stuff up. Oh, love it. And I just kind of, you know me, I just go back on the plate and just keep on picking up material. Why not? In different places. Okay. These are good. 
And of course I can just keep on building up color. So I'm going to do one more roll of this and let me see what I want to, okay, I'm going to use the color shift in this black flash. I love this one too. I'm going to use this to, to pick up, to use that circle stencil. Let's give it a try. Okay. So I'm just going to do a, run a thin line here because the stencil is not that wide. So since I pulled it out, you guys can see what it looks like. Let's just take that side and put it down there. Let's grab it there. Get a little bit of on that. Okay. Probably going to do the other side of these with um, with some more of this. So I'll, I'll keep on working, but I'm just being conscious of the time, and I want to show you that other technique. So these I'll work on a little bit more. But you know, like so, we've been working now for about 25 minutes, and you see how you can just have these short sessions. And just so whenever you get a minute, you can run in your studio, it just need 10, 15, I mean 15, 20 minutes. Go in there and see those that circle pattern. Oh, I love that stencil. Look at that. That looks so good right on top. Just as this subtle stenciling. And this is the black flash. I love, love, love this. It's the color shift as well. Really, truthfully, if you can afford it, just go in and buy them all. Because it's not a color that I don't like. <laughs> Oh, look at that. And see when you do these real thin layers, you get like this glazing. You can see that. So we can still see what's underneath it. We're just getting it really neat. Oh, look at that in there. That looks good. So just using bits of the pattern uh, versus the whole pattern, you know. Look at that. That's really lovely. So, so what we'll do now is I'm just going to take some of this and just pick up the uh, the ghost of it should pick that up pretty well okay since I have some blank spots here let's just go ahead and grab those never waste anything and then I'm going to show you this other technique before we're done. So you have a couple of things to work on in your studio. Okay. Yep. See how we got the negative pattern there? The dots. So that's really good. No need to leave anything behind. Just all that information. Just bits and pieces of it. That came out nice over that blue. Alrighty, so let me show you the technique that I was telling you about. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to use, let me see, what do I want to use? I know. Let me just use some of these I have out here. So I have a Bordeaux red. That should be a really beautiful dark color. And then I'm going to use some Mars Orange. How you guys are going to like this? I think you will. And I mean, that's Mars Orange. Let's use some Mars Yellow. And I'm going to get that Crimson Red that I liked. And. So, I'm going to take a paintbrush. Let's see which one do I want. I want a stiff one. Like this will be good. So, we're actually going to just kind of paint on this plate. Just kind of doing some color mixing. Okay. okay, I'm 
going somewhere with this. So now I'm going to get some of the white. This Arteza white. Put a little bit of this down here. And um, get another brush here. I can use. Which one can I use? Let's just use this one. Okay, so I'm going to pull this print because I want to show you so we can kind of create this really abstract looking pattern. But I'm doing this by example. So, oh, I know what I want to put. I'm going to put some gold. Let's use some of this Arteza gold. Let's get some gold on here. I'm loading this plate up. I know because I generally don't. But I need to get to, to something quick. So I wanted you guys to see that. What we're doing here. Okay. And you can really use the plate like this very painterly. Let's go ahead and pull this. Okay. So we got this pattern here, this print here. Some of it sort of dried on me there, but we're going to go back to it. So I'm going to put this to the side. And now I'm going to go and get, I'm going to put some Golden's Quinacridone Ozo Gold down. Now this, remember, this is all acrylic. And now I'm going to get this, and let's just, now this is where I want to show you. I have, the uh, pulling that print allowed a lot of this to sort of flatten out. And uh, I knew you're probably thinking, Robin, what in the world are you doing? You'll see. Put some white on here just to kind of brighten it up a little bit. So this is just, if I were just playing with, um, I can even use uh, my palette knife here so you don't have you can actually move some of this around to get a different effect with your palette knife and it kind of see how it kind of scuffs the colors up too so you can kind of just get a whole nother look here Okay, so now I can pull that like uh, I showed you, and we would actually have a print, or we can take, I'll this up so you guys can see it, we can take our camera, uh-huh, uh-huh. So you know you have a jelly print down there and you're just it's just not coming up the way you want it to or you look down on the plate and you're like oh my goodness that's just that's gorgeous I wish I could just get it like that we've all had that let me just get a little more red here we've all had that thought I, a million times and then when you go to try to do it it doesn't come up right so one time I was looking and I thought I wonder if I take a um, a picture of it. So here we're going to take, I'm actually going to take a picture of this, this print. Now this is slightly different, remember, because I put more of the quinacridone ozo gold on it, which is really orangey. But just look at that print. Just, I mean, look at how um, much of the definition of the, the paint lines, let me get it to focus. I mean, it looks like we paint it right on this paper. And then you go to use this in your journals, or you, I mean, it's just, look at that texture right there, that right there, there's the gold. 
So anyhow, yeah, I just wanted to show you guys that technique because I love doing that. I do that a lot when I hit things on my jelly plate that I really love and I'm like, oh, probably not going to be able to get that off. I just take a picture of it and put it up. All right. So once again, if you guys love this one. Take care and I'll see you back next week with another um, technique video that's pretty different. I think you guys are going to really like it. So leave the comments below. If you like this video, thumbs it up. Follow me if you're not, a, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet. And once again, thank you guys. See you soon. Happy creating.